Shabbat Shalom, everybody. So today we start a, a new book. We start the book of uh, Shemot or Exodus, <coughs> and we will see now. We continue in uh, exploring our text to see what uh, what Jehovah has uh, given us to understand Yeshua Hamashiach. First of all, I want to quote uh, from the, the book of uh, Yeshayahu, Isaiah and uh, uh, to understand why I will develop this way. So we read in the book of uh, Yeshayahu, and we turn to the chapter uh, 46, in the verse 9 and 10, and I read, Remember the former things of all. I am Elohim, and there is none else. I am Elohim, there is none else like me, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times, Thing that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. Here the word for beginning is Bereshit. So, in other words, Jehovah is saying, I declare the end from Bereshit. Bereshit is a name in Hebrew from the first book of Moshe. And we now see that he has embedded everything in it. The Torah contains everything which reveals the work of Yeshua, and we will discover it as we go step by step to understand. We have seen in the previous parashot, Miketz and Vayechi, the uh, revelation of Yeshua in the life of Yosef. Now the time has changed, we come in the book of Shemot, the former Pharaoh have died, those who accept and were blessed by the life of Yosef. Now we come to the time of Moshe, the birth of Moshe, and the Pharaoh ruling at this time. Pharaoh of this time is now a picture of Satan, and we will see in his work the oppression of the children of Israel. Moshe raised and come to the age of maturity. He was 40 years old. So now, the number 40 is a specific number in the studying of the Torah, which is direct connected with the measurement of time in association with the, the Yovel or the Jubilee, which is a period of 50 years so of time. The number 40, we, when we use it in this connection, we will see uh, very wonderful things. If we go to uh, Bereshit chapter 6, in the verse 3, we see the first time the reading here. And Jehovah say, My Ruach, spirit, shall not always try with man, for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be an hundred and twenty years. This is the English translation. So if we take it literally, we will have problem, because it is not what is the meaning. The man do not live 120 years. Yes, I know. Some people say today that there are some who live in 120 years, but there are very, very few. But in Psalm, in Psalm 90, we read something with the author is the same as Moshe. So we read in this Psalm, what is the meaning of life? So, I look here in the psalm and I read uh, here mm -hmm. the days of our years, in the verse 10, the days of our years are three scores, years and ten. Three scores, years and ten is seventy. And if by reason of strength, they be four score years, which means eighty years, yet is a strength, labor, and sorrow, for it is soon cut off and we fly away. So we see here that Moshe said in his psalm that the days of our years are either seventy or eighty years. We see quite a difference with Bereshit chapter 6. So the Bereshit chapter 6 do not say that man will live 120 years, but he say 
that the life on Earth in this form will be 120 years of time counting. So if I multiply the 120 years by the timing of Jovel's 50 years, I come to a time period of 6,000 years. So this is very important to understand because the, t the number 40 now will have its uh, full dimension in the life of Moshe when he left Egypt. Moshe was a man who was, who was a call in his life. And all of us, we have a call. We just need to understand it, to find out what the creator of the universe has put in our life. Moshe knew from his youth that he was an Hebrew. And when he came to the age of 40, he had compassion with his uh, uh, fellow brethren, the chin of Israel. He thought that he would take in his own hand to deliver his brethren by killing the Egyptian. And this provoked his departure from Egypt to Midian, where he will spend 40 years. And this is quite interesting because here we have shadows of things we don't know. Moshe is a type of uh, Yeshua. He is a deliverer. He will, is the one who will redeem the children of Israel from the power of Pharaoh when he comes back 40 years later. Uh -huh. Now it's very interesting because if we compare the 40 years and we multiply it by the time of the Jubilee, the Yovers here, we come to 40 times 50, we have 2,000 years, which represent the time of the first departure from Yeshua to the Father until he come back. And we can see that in the book of uh, Joshua, which is in really, it is Yehoshua, the son of Nun. If we read the five first chapter, we will see how Yehoshua bring back the children of Israel to the land of Canaan, which uh, uh, is, uh, was given to Abraham by Jehovah. This is again a shadow of the work of Yeshua, who will bring the children of Jehovah, who are scattered in the four corners of the earth, which is called Mitzrayim, the wilderness, back to the land of Canaan after 2,000 years. So I encourage you to read the first chapter of uh, the book of Yeshua, Yeshua, to understand what is embedded in it. Now, in the life of Moshe, the same. We see Moshe forced to leave Egypt. This is a plan of Jehovah for Moshe, to leave Egypt, to go to Midian. Midian, where he will meet the Yethro and marry Zephora. So now it's very interesting but because Midian was a descendant from Keturah, the second wife from Abraham. And Yethro was a pagan priest. Now imagine, just to understand, that Moshe is always a shadow, a picture of Yeshua. Now this period of time, the 40 years, is a microcosm, is a concentration, a compression of 2,000 years between the first and second coming. Moshe was hidden 40 years from his brethren. He, de he departed. He departed from Egypt and went to a place which was not known to his brethren. For 40 years, Yeshua departed from his brethren, went back to the fathers for a period of time of 2,000 years, which is the full time of the 40 years of Moshe in the wilderness. He will come back the same way. He will come back. Moshe came back when Jehovah told him to go back to Egypt. He didn't do that on his own. And the same, the same happened with Yeshua who will come back when the Father sent him. And they both come for the same reason, to deliver, to deliver the children of Israel, you and me, like it was in the time of Moshe, to bring us back to the land of Canaan. This is what we see in this parasha. The literal text is the recall of the history which is marked in the time forever so that we don't forget what happened to our ancestors, to the descendant, 
don't think if you are an Israelite, you are an Israelite in the moment you accept Yeshua as your master and you follow his step in the Torah, you become a member, a member of the household of Elohim, as Apostle Charles explained. And there is only one way, because Yeshua become the ruler of the house of Jacob. That is what you read in the book of Luke in chapter 3, when it is his birth. He will reign of the house of Jacob forever. The house of Jacob is 12 tribes. Here Moshe now will undergo 40 years of perfection. And like Yeshua, he will be perfected by his suffering. This is the same. We read that in the, in the book of Hebrew, chapter 5, verse 8. I will read for you, and you will see that Yeshua, like Moshe, or the Moshe like Yeshua, had to undergo suffering in order to be perfected. Chapter 5, verse 8. Let me see. Verse 8. Though he were a son, speaking of Yeshua, yet learned he obedience by the thing which he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. You see, now Moshe was also he has to go through suffering. He, go f he goes from his lofty place in the house of Pharaoh, where he had all comfort, where he had all what he needed, in order to he humble himself and went into Midian, where he suffered 40 years, the separation from his brethren. This is the suffering he suffered. And through this suffering, through this, through this separation, Exactly like he was with Joseph, 20 years for Joseph, 20 years of Jacob. Now we see 40 years for Moshe. The higher the cause, the higher the suffering. And it is how he was perfected. When he was ready to be the one Jehovah wanted him to be, then Jehovah called him. So this is an encouragement for each of us, that the call is on us. It depends how we will react to this call that this call will take place in our life. So I encourage you to see that everything happened in its time. Jehovah will do it in his time. So take it with patience and learn from this parasha what happened to Moshe is in your life also the same call. I don't say that you will be a Moshe, but we are a Moshe in, the, in our life, in our own life. We are the same. We are all coming as living stones. Yeshua Messiah being the chief cornerstone. So we see we have a place to play in the body of Mashiach, in the, in the coming kingdom. So we learn here that this parasha, once again, confirm what Jehovah will reveal thousands of years later. Yeshua HaMashiach is a true Mashiach, is a true redempt, redemptor of the children of Israel, you and me, and our brethren Yehuda, so that everything is true and Yehovah is not a liar. So, my brother and sister, I hope you will be encouraged to study this parasha. And if you want to read more, you will have to go to my blog and to seek for the parasha. Shemot, and you have a lot of details concerning this parasha. Okay, so I will say Shabbat Shalom to all of you and Shavua Tov that we may meet you again in the next parasha. So, Shalom.